So, today we are going to be talking all about color. And one of the cool things about that video is they make amazing use of color. If you noticed at the end, those three fellows were thrown through three colors of paint. Blue, yellow, and red. Those were three prim the three primary colors. If you notice throughout the video, they made amazing use of warm colors and cool colors. They used complementary colors, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, hang on because we're going to learn today. Today we're going to be talking all about color. It's a colorful world, and welcome to the world of color. Before we begin, sit back, relax, and get ready to preview everything you're going to learn about this element we call color. Imagine a world without colors. No thanks. Wherever you may be, there are so many colors to see. It starts with the primary colors yellow, red, and blue. Mix them up and make secondary colors too. Don't forget the tertiary ones. These colors blend primary and secondary tones. What a way to step up your color game. There's almost too many colors to name. Like in this sunrise, colors can be warm. But wait, colors can be cold too. Watch them transform. Some colors pop. We call them complementary. They lend each other a helping hand, like musicians in a band. 
The color wheel is a useful tool. It can help you with this rule. Take a ride to the opposite side. That is where you will find a color's good friend. It's one and only match till the end. Colors can make you feel different emotions. Do you feel happy like these flowers? Or restless like a wavy ocean? Tint your hues with the color white. You'll make pale colors like this pink. Add a hint of black or a dab of gray. Changing up pure color can change how the viewer thinks. Color can be neutral or intense. Crank up the color cause we prefer it loud. But that's just our two cents. Go on, use some color, a little or a lot. What colors will you use in your next work of art? Grab your brush and palette. Give it all you've got. All right. So what are we going to learn in this lesson? We're going to learn mostly about identifying those colors and being able to tell the, about the different types of colors. We're going to focus on learning the vocabulary things like uh, what are the warm colors, the cool colors, what does tertiary mean, and how does it apply to color? Uh, we're going to look at how artists use color as a principle, I mean, as an element of art uh, to create emphasis in a work of art or to create unity in a work of art. And so we're going to just go ahead and jump right in today. One of my favorite things about color is that artists can use it to communicate and express their emotions. I'm not much of a talker, so I like to use color to share my ideas and express myself through the artwork that I create. How artists use color in their artwork can tell a viewer a lot about the artist's feelings, ideas, or environment. Let's explore this a little further. Communicating Emotions John Lafarge created this painting of, flower, of a flower using purple, green and blue which are all cool colors so what are cool colors well cool colors that are give there are colors that give a feeling of cold such as blue we also think of greens and some purples as cool colors when artists use cool colors to create the artwork they might be sharing a feeling of calmness or sadness how do you feel when you look at this painting it doesn't make you feel super excited does it no, it's very calming and relaxing. Sharing messages. In some global communities, artists use color to send messages to others. For example, in Costa Rica, locals use bright colors to decorate their ox carts, which demonstrate wealth within their local communities. This means that local artists use color to share a message about their family status. The colors an artist uses to create their artwork can also tell the viewer a lot about that artist's environment. Miki Suzanne used blue and green, which are both cool colors, to create the scenery of this painting. This might mean that the artist lived in a cool environment or was inspired by nature. Communicating through color. Choose which colors to use in an artwork. Choosing which colors to use in an artwork is an important task for all artists. Artists need to consider the message or the emotion they want their artwork to express. This will help the artist choose which colors to use. Let's review a few important color concepts that artists need to consider when choosing the colors for their artwork. So first, let's look at those basic primary colors. Primary colors are used here by Mondrian to create this uh, work of art. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. They're used to make every other color on the color wheel. In addition to the uh, use of color and uh, of black and white, you can create all those tints and shades too. Although his colors use uh, colors and designs are simple. They are very interesting to look at because of the lines and shapes that he used.
Monet used secondary colors to create his painting of his garden. Secondary colors are created by mixing two primary colors together. How do the paintings and the colors in this painting make you feel? So purple, green, and orange, those are our three secondary colors. And we see the use of orange here and purples and greens. And again, very soothing, very relaxing. Oh, I think we went too far. Talk about warm colors. Warm colors are those colors like reds and yellows and oranges. Uh, Mark Rothko used warm colors like red, orange, and yellow to create this painting. By using warm colors, Rothko intended to make the viewer feel a certain emotion. How do warm colors used in this painting make you feel? Maybe excited. Sometimes red can mean uh, anger or um, excitement or... Um, and often is used to create a lot of interest. So what about those cool colors? Just like warm colors, cool colors can also express a mood or emotion. This artist used cool colors like blues and greens to create this painting. These colors work together to give a calm feeling. What kind of song do you think the woman in the painting is playing? Probably something sort of calm and relaxing. Maybe even something a little sad. When we talk about intensity, we're talking about that unique characteristic that gives colors uh, that, that ability to stand out, to be really uh, seen and uh, to kind of jump out at us. To create this painting, the artist used colors that have different intensities. Intensity refers to how light or dull the color is. An artist may choose to do this so the viewer focuses on the areas of the painting that stand out. A low intensity color often looks dull, whereas high intensity colors look bright. The art also artist also, the artist also uses warm and cool colors. So we see those cool colors back here in what's probably this lake or some type of ocean, maybe way off in the distance. And then we see all these warm colors that create these little plants that are sticking up in the sky and the sunshine and all these bright grasses here. But we see cool colors again in these bands of this cool green grasses and these neat blue green tr uh, trunks of these trees that come up. And again, a little bit of those cool greens here in the front. What about complementary colors? What are complementary colors? Well, specifically, we're talking about colors that are uh, opposite from each other on the color wheel. And in our make day, we're going to focus on making a color wheel and examining which colors are across from each other and what colors blend together to make new colors. Edgar Degas, Edgar Degas used complementary colors to create this painting. Complementary colors, when used together, allow each other to stand out, even as they begin to blend. In this painting, Degas used the complementary colors of orange, blue, purple, and yellow together to enhance the dramatic feeling of the dancers' costumes. So you see the orange and the yellow here, but we see the blues and, and, the, and even blue purples down here. Those are complementary types of colors. <laughs> and finally, when we talk about color, we're talking about value. When we add black to a color, we get a, a shade. When we add white to a color, we get a tint. And those tints and shades create the values or the lightness or darkness of those colors. To create certain emotions or feelings, artists will often use colors that have different values. Using colors with different values in the same work also creates that contrast. How did the use of dark and light colors make this painting more interesting to look at? Well, again, we see some light colors here, like this or this green, sort of this purple, maybe this yellow. But those bright colors really stand out. And these dark colors, these dark blacks and lines, really make these bold lines pop out at us. And it creates that contrast. They wouldn't pop out at us if they weren't surrounded uh, in some areas by those very sort of light colors. So, remembering color. Well, this is where we're getting ready to talk about uh, our uh, make day. Wow, is it just me or is anyone else overwhelmed? Who knew that there'd be so much to know about color? 
It's a good thing there's a handy tool we can use to help us remember everything. Everyone feast your eyes on the handy dandy color wheel. If you ever find yourself confused and unsure about how to identify some of the color concepts, you can use a color wheel. Looking at a color wheel can help you remember the primary colors, secondary colors, warm colors, cool colors, and complementary colors. Identifying primary and secondary colors on the color wheel. Both the primary and secondary colors can be found on the color wheel. When two primary colors combine, they create a secondary. So red and yellow combine to make orange. Yellow and blue, yellow and blue combine to make green, and red and blue combine to make purple. Warm colors can be found on the top half of this color wheel, and the cool colors on the bottom half. And finally, complementary colors are those colors that are across each other in the color wheel. Orange and blue, yellow is to purple, and green to uh, to red. Those are those complementary colors. So now we're going to take a look at identifying those in art. Look close at this painting. Can we find those primary colors? Oh, yeah, I see some. Here's red, yellow, and obviously blue. What about secondary colors? Yep, there's a purple. Hmm. Hey, there's an orange. Is there any green? Of course. Yes, greens. What about high-intensity colors? Boy, that yellow pops out. Are they low intensity colors? Sure. Look at that sort of really muted blue green way back in the back there. What about complementary colors? Well, we talked about purple and yellow, orange and blue, red and green, all of those there. Warm colors? Sure. Red, yellows, oranges. What about cool colors? Yeah, of course. Green, blue, purples. All of the colors used in this one. So now we're going to talk about our studio time. Uh, this week you can um, come to, this, to the make day and either create your color wheel using watercolors. Watercolors make a great medium for this. You could use pastels or crayons. You can even use um, color pencils uh, for this project. Or if you don't have any materials, don't worry. Like always, you can use Chrome Canvas or Sketchpad 5.1 to, to complete this assignment. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. I look forward to see you. Oh, wait. Don't go anywhere. We need to talk about our attendance answer of the day, and it's Lois Jones. Lois was an influential artist and teacher during her seven-decade career. Jones was one of the most notable figures to attain notoriety for her art while living as a black expatriate in Paris during the 1930s and 40s. Her career began in textile design before she decided to focus on the fine arts. <clears throat> and this is one of the examples of her work. Um, she was one of the artists who was um, uh, who came from the uh, Harlem Renaissance period. Uh, her work was influential in inspiring artists like Picasso and Henri Matisse. Uh, these artists that, uh, that also... Uh, responded to what was going on around uh, them and what they saw going on in the art world. And she was big in, in bringing this African-American influence into the world of art. Lois Jones. Lois Jones is your attendance uh, question answer of the week. Guys, have a great day. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you on the make day. Oh.